Today's episode is brought to you by Audible. Audible is an amazing service. With over 180,000 titles to choose from, there is a book for every mood. I highly recommend checking out 20th Century Ghosts by Joe Hill. It is so freaky, you guys will love it. Go to audibletrial.com slash R-A-H-M to pick it up for free. In addition to your free audiobook, you will also get a 30-day free trial. Head to audibletrial.com slash R-A-H-M to pick up your free audiobook and your free 30-day trial. This is fine. This is going to be really weird. This is really weird. Okay, so if we're actually recording... I'm, like, not emotionally (laughs) prepared for this. I... So I'm going to tell you guys that we are experimenting with a internet relationship. (laughs) (laughs) We're experimenting with an internet relationship because we're going to start having... Something I don't want to announce it. It's it's a surprise. So we're gonna we're doing this for reasons, and you don't need to know why right now. So shut so, up. <laughs> Nobody needs to know. Yeah, it's not <laughs> our business. <laughs> it's fine. We'll we'll let you guys know when the time is right. So so okay. Are we ready? Like actually ready? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I hope so. <laughs> we'll see. We'll figure this out. So if this episode ends up sucking. Which it very well might. We'll figure this out. And you guys can tell us because we got to figure it out because we got stuff going on. Stuff and things. Stuff and things. <laughs> so we're doing... Uh, oh, well, we have a bunch of... Oh God, we have so much... So much shit. Random, so much updates. Um, since this is technically our last like owned theme, do you still want to announce your original theme? Because this was yours originally. I said originally a lot. <laughs> uh yeah i can i guess i can talk about the original theme so the original theme of this was the theme it is now it's just it was just cults yeah it's not it's not changing it was just cults <laughs> but it was it was more like talking in depth about cults yeah so like yeah. bunches and bunches of culty goodness culty shit so um this is interesting because a lot of things are changing. So we're only like 20 episodes in. So we're still doing a lot of like changing and adjusting and getting our groove. And um, so we're so like I just said, we're um, getting rid of owned themes. So it's no longer going to be like Michaela's and mine and a special than Michaela's and mine. It's just all going to be ours together. And um what else did we change? Did we actually change anything? Oh, yeah. So we're actually... This is going to be like our last dedicated non-movie themed episode, if that makes sense. So like from now on, if we do... um, What was the one that I... What was the one that I actually used? Like Haunted Objects? Yeah. Yeah. So like if we know of a mirror movie that was actually based on a real mirror, we'll take... We'll talk about the real mirror and then talk about the movie more <laughs> it's all very confusing you guys don't need to know about this anywho but everything else is the same so we're gonna start with our tal slash news and then go on to the new what's new in entertainment and then so on and so forth so you can go ahead and do your tils slash news oh <laughs> so okay I definitely found this today, (laughs) and it's kind of a, just a TIL, because I learned it. I learned of its existence. Yeah, see, okay, I'm not going to read along, because I want an actual reaction, because all I can see is the title of the article. Oh, buddy. (laughs) If the title is not enough, then we might have some sincere problems. Oh, my God. (laughs) All right, so for everybody who's not reading along... (laughs) The, this is a story out of Arizona. Of course. Out of Phoenix, I think? No. Oh, weird. It was in the Arizona News, but it's from uh, Wiggins, Mississippi. Uh, article title says, 
Man decapitated his mother with a butter knife, his teeth, and his bare hands. Wait, all at once or like one after the other? I'm assuming one after the other. Like he tried with the butter knife and that didn't work. So he was just like, fuck it and got super hulky pissed and then started gnawing at it. Maybe. (laughs) But it's... Okay. So it says... A Mississippi man decapitated his mother with a butter knife, his teeth, and bare hands, a sheriff's deputy said in court on Wednesday. Uh, whatever, I don't want to, I don't like saying these fucking idiots' names. Uh, he confessed to killing his mother, a high school guidance counselor, earlier this month. The Sun-Herald reported this. Her body was found by the, by police outside of her home on June 6th. So this happened last month. Mm-hmm. Officials say that Captain Ray Boggs of the Stone County Sheriff's Office went to Johnson's home for a welfare check after Sherry's sibling, that's the mother, uh, contacted authorities when they had not heard from her in a few days. Jesus. Blech. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> uh, her son said that, or he told the mother's relatives that she was away on a cruise. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I hate that shit. <laughs> right? It always freaks me out. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't trust anybody that's like, oh, yeah, she's at the spa. I'm like, okay, no, I'm going to talk to her. Give me the spa's phone number. Yeah. Like, I'm going to get a hold of her. <laughs> um, When Boggs, the deputy, arrived to the house, the son was outside and told the deputy his mother was fine, but the deputy insisted he look around inside the home, and the son led him and two other officers inside where they saw blood. Yeah. When <laughs> the quote says... Oh, nervous. <laughs> when I entered the bedroom, I immediately noticed blood everywhere. He said, adding the walls and bed had also blood had also had blood on them. My words aren't working today. That's fine. It's been a long it's day. <laughs> oh, okay. So after searching the surrounding area, they found Sherry Johnson's body in the backyard with her head about fifteen feet fifteen feet away from her body. <laughs> so he like took his mom's body outside, but. Wait. Oh, no. But wait, there's more. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) After further investigations, deputies interviewed the son, who allegedly confessed to killing his mother, obviously. Mm -hmm. He said they got into a fight over credit cards. Oh, And he choked her until she stopped breathing. It's all about the fucking money. What Always money. But the deputy says, he told me that he beat her up real bad. He said it got out of hand. Uh, Boggs, the deputy, testified at a preliminary hearing on Wednesday and said that after he choked her, the son decapitated her using a butter knife along with his hands and teeth. So I'm assuming it was at the same side or yeah. at the same time. And it says he then moved the body outside so the home would not smell. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep. Sure. Logic. So <laughs> we end up finding out a little bit into this article that a one of the relatives told investigators that the son served in the US army when he was young and enrolled in community college. Oh, how great. Uh he was expelled from the Department of Veterans Affairs due to a previous arrest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh <laughs> his father was present during the hearing but did not comment. The son's lawyer said they were considering an insanity defense and uh it says, the son does have a su- substantial history, and y'all heard the facts of this particular case, the <laughs> lawyer said. This is not a normal homicide, dot, 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 but we've got to wait until we get the records and probably have him properly evaluated. Then we'll kind of know where we're headed. Jesus. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he's fucking crazy. I don't know. I don't know if that kind it's- of crazy is fixable. <laughs> So I read this, I read this article to Sam, like, I just read the headline to him, and he was like, that takes some fucking determination. Right? Because it's not easy to get through bone and and tissue and- But who, like, even with a fight where you end up killing somebody, why would you full-blown decapitate them? I, yeah. Like I said, that kind of crazy cannot be fixed. (laughs) No, that's something else on its own. And that was just, whew, that was wild. It was a wild ride reading that. Huh. That's fucking <laughs> freaky. <laughs> freaky it was pretty and dark. fascinating. It was pretty dark. But yeah, so it was uh, reported by like the, the station that I got the web- the info from mm-hmm. uh, is an Arizona station. So it's going pretty national. Jesus. I mean, understandable. Well, yeah, it's brutal as fuck. Yeah. 
And I figured with today's topic, being <laughs> brutal was okay. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Fucking decapitated with butter knife. What a way to go. Decapitation. It's gross. Um, okay, so mine actually ties into last week's stuff. Only because, like, I found this almost directly after we recorded the last episode. <laughs> so I'm not going to read the whole article because it's a bunch of spoilers about Hereditary. But it's basically information on, like, the real horrors behind Hereditary aka the um, the satanic panic and i couldn't fucking resist anything that you know me in alliteration but satanic panic just flows it's perfect (laughs) and it's amazing that's my new url guys satanic panic satanic panic okay so like i said i'm not gonna read the whole thing because it's just basically spoiler after spoiler after spoiler of hereditary so i'm just gonna like read the whole section of what satanic panic was um in brief the satanic panic was a that almost sounds like a drink like a drink you would get at a bar it sounds like a band (laughs) probably like panic at the disco like went super dark (laughs) satanic panic (laughs) okay anyways it's fine uh driven by a wide variety of not particularly scrupulous sources that the united states had become infiltrated by a large number of satanists and other practitioners of the dark arts who were conspiring to abuse and assault the nation's children commit human sacrifices and turn the country over to the dark lord (laughs) i can get behind that right so like so one thing i will give away in the hereditary is that it is a very cult-centric movie and you don't really know that until the end so i guess semi-spoiler i'm not going to give away anything else anywho but um that's why this was this article was made is because like they're like they're not so far off with the craziness that ensued in this movie no. <laughs> but then it but then it continues to say the idea was ridiculous on its face but it had a deep deep roots it had deep deep roots in the united states stretching all the way back to the salem witch trials of course which we never which we've never quite been able to shake variations on it was it the pizzagate conspiracy theory what the fuck is that by the way i didn't look into it but we're doing it on it (laughs) she's on it um if not the satanic panic dressed up in 2000 wait wait was it the pizzagate conspiracy theory if not the satanic panic dressed up in the 2010s clothing whatever the fuck that means What was vaguely remarkable about the satanic panic was how it felt as if it had arrived in our reality straight from a horror movie. When you look at some of the true accounts of devil cults on the uh, evangelical Christian circuit, fuck them, just saying, in the 1980s, many of them sound less like anything that could really happen and much more like the third acts of Rosemary's Baby, The Exorcist, and The Omen, much of which, like the... Wait, much like the way reports of alien sightings in the wake of Close Encounters of the Third Kind became more likely to depict gray-skinned beings with big black eyes, the devil worshipper movies of the 1960s and 70s solidified within the American subconscious a very specific idea of what was going on behind closed doors in seemingly harmless suburbia. Surprise, it involved bathing in goat's blood and trying to get demons to possess children. And it worked. (laughs) (laughs) Right? This is, of course, how horror often works in a feedback loop with reality. Our real-life horrors, in this case, a millennia-old belief of dark in a dark being constantly trying to turn humanity against its better natures, getting translated into horror tales which get translated into real life scares which later become other horror tales so basically it's it's all about how see i really wanted to do this episode later on and like look at the beginnings of horror and where it became what it is today and this is like a really big part of it yeah like we wouldn't have witch stories as extreme as we do now or cult stories if it wasn't for stuff like the satanic panic you're right so 
Pizzagate. Did you look it up? Yeah. So Pizzagate ended up happening happening in 2016. Um, Pizzagate is a debunked conspiracy theory that went viral during the 2016 United States presidential election cycle. In the fall of 2016, the personal email account of John Podesta, Hillary Clinton's campaign manager, was hacked in a spear phishing attack and his emails were subsequently made public by WikiLeaks. The proponents of the Pizzagate theory falsely claimed that the emails contained, contained coded messages referring to human trafficking and connecting several U.S. restaurants and high-ranking officials of the Democratic public Party blah, with an alleged child sex ring. The theory has been extensively discredited by a wide array of organizations, including the Met- the... Metropolitan Police Department and of the dis- District of Columbia, but they were saying it's called Pizzagate because of the um, restaurant officials apparently. Well, because they were um, associating a specific pizza place with the sex ring. See, that's not nearly as funny and exciting and delicious as it sounds. I know. <laughs> they were saying that it was like. There were sexting scandals and evidence of uh, pedophilia. Oh my god, this is depressing. <laughs> it's really sad. Yeah, human trafficking. And the theory was also proposed that the ring was a meeting ground for satanic ritual abuse. Okay, so tying back into satanic panic. <laughs> See? Uh, spread all over social media. And then the place that it was centralized around, they actually had a shooting there. Oh, fuck. Yeah, which is really fucked up. Uh, somebody fired three shots at the restaurant with an AR-15, striking walls, a desk, and a door. So I don't think he hurt anybody, but he planned to, like, self-investigate, be the fucking, like, hero. <laughs> and uh, he saw himself as a potential hero of the story, a rescuer of children. That's bullshit. So he, he went in, balls a-blazing. Well, pizza... Pizza Gate or whatever the fuck it's called needs to be something else and much more happy. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. Yeah, I don't like it. Let's move on. So, okay. what's new in entertainment with you? Um, so fun new stuff. <laughs> um, while I was at the Gorge, yay! Uh, you and Flynn went and picked up a bunch of books for me, which is amazing. <laughs> Flynn begrudgingly <I> f- came. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It was a blessing <laughs> to go there, Flynn. Um, a lot of Stephen King. Yeah, I'm really excited about. Gone Girl was in there, which I haven't read that. Yes, I want. I wanted you to read that because I really fucking desperately want you to watch that movie with me because you will love it because it's a psycho bitch. She's lovely. Psycho bitch. <laughs> psycho bitch. I don't have any of the books in here, so I can't like see them. That's fine. Um, there's a picture really on Instagram. Fun. There's pictures on Instagram, yes. I think you posted one. Did you post one? No, you, no, posted, you posted a picture DVD, that I took. But I posted mine. Yeah. Um, yeah, you post the, whatever. <laughs> Who words. Um, but because of that I had to go through and reorganize both my bookshelves because I have a lot of books. You need more bookshelves. And, yes, you're right. <laughs> but also, I'm actually gonna get one of those floating ones that you like hook into the wall and then you use a hardcover to be the base and you stack books on top of it and it looks like the stack is floating oh right Mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna get a couple of those they like slip into the covers into the cover yeah that's beautiful i love them my cousin had a bunch of them and i loved it but i never bought them for myself um but they're like 15 bucks on amazon for one so that's not bad exactly but speaking of more books, <laughs> guess what I found for eighteen dollars? I'm so fucking jealous, by the way. It's at Costco. I found The Outsider, which is Stephen King's new book, for eighteen dollars. I'm jealous. I'm gonna go get it because that's like It was seventeen forty nine. Everyone's saying it's so fucking terrifying. I'm so fucking excited. I've heard really good things. I'm excited for them to make a movie. <laughs> Are they gonna do it? Probably. It's Stephen King. It's Stephen King. <laughs> it's fine. They'll either do a movie or they'll find a way to do a TV show, like a miniseries. Either way would be perfect by me. Right. Uh, and then last thing, I finished the Exorcist TV show and Yay. I'm sad because no. it hasn't been picked up yet. Oh. They saved I Lucifer, know. so hopefully they'll save this. Hashtag save the Exorcist. Hashtag tag Amazon Prime. No, Netflix. Cause they, oh, so we, we missed, when we were talking earlier about that, uh, you thought it was Amazon Prime. It was actually Netflix. Netflix saved oh. Lucifer. Oh. 
So, okay. good guy Netflix. <laughs> yeah, good guy Netflix. I have Netflix. I don't have Amazon Prime. It's, it's only slightly worth it. <laughs> it's fine. Anyways. Um. So, yeah. I watched Strangers Pray at Night because you refused to watch it with me. I don't like home invasion movies. It was bad. It was really bad. Um. Okay, so that's not true. If I didn't think that it was a Strangers sequel, it would have been okay. As like a standalone? Yeah. Yeah. Because the only thing, literally the only thing that transferred was the bad guys. The masked bad guys. Yeah. So you didn't get a backstory. You didn't get anything else. But the thing that was really wrong with it is that there was just no... So there's no backstory. There's no anything new on the bad guys. It's just literally the only... (laughs) They stripped out all the tension. Like, the tension was the best thing about the regular strangers. And, like, this was more of an action flick than anything. Like, it was, like, a thriller horror because there was a lot more, like, running around. There was a lot more outdoor activity. There was a lot more, like, high-speed chases on foot. (laughs) So it was very odd. Okay. And then every, like, only half of the people died. Not all of them. So I'm upset. Anyways. (laughs) And then I'm also binging Pretty Little Liars for, like, the millionth time. And I even wrote in my notes, hashtag sorry, not sorry. Because sorry, sorry. it's Did you read all the books? No. I I, I meant give, to. I don't give any shits about books usually. <laughs> I'm trying to change that. <laughs> My favorite thing. So when Pretty Little Liars released, I was in I think I was in high school. I don't even remember. So I was in, I was in high school. And the first episode came out and everybody was of course talking about it. Mm-hmm. And I was like I was like, I love that show. It's just so good. And my friend was like there's only one episode out. It was like, literally doesn't matter. It was a good fucking episode. The Shut fir- up. It's actually, the first episode is probably one of the better pilot episodes. Yeah. And I didn't have to really give it good. five episodes to like it. I liked it immediately. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I really liked it from like the second I turned it on. It was really good. And everyone was like, well, why haven't you read the books? The books are really good. And I'm like, because... I'm in, like, I'm, what, 15? I don't like reading yet. (laughs) That's actually the opposite for me. I read all the time when I was younger. I read, like, high school level books when I was in elementary school. And then as soon as I hit high school, I just stopped reading. (laughs) I had a really hard time with everything except for Shakespeare. Really? and, And the Odyssey. And Twilight. I read. I did read through all of Twilight. I will give you that. So did I. I read it's through fine. all of Twilight before I read through all of Harry Potter. I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. Um, I read most my... of the um, series of unfortunate events too. So we got through our TILs. What's new Yay. entertainment? Pretty Little Liars. Yeah, yeah, Pretty Little Liars. <sighs> so you ready? Because this is a lot. This is a lot. People get ready. <laughs> Our... Mine is not nearly as bad as yours. <laughs> it's not bad. It is informative and it is insane. It is perfect. No, yours is bad. It's a tragedy. Yeah, but it's still fascinating. It is still fascinating. You're ta- <laughs> <laughs> Take a moment. Take a breather. I know. It's like you're talking to me about how fascinating it is. My goodness. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. Okay. So my story's a little more recent than yours. Yeah, I never actually read into this a lot. I just saw You didn't? It. I'll I'll tell you. <laughs> I actually already told you. It's fine. Go. Oh, yeah, cuz you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, um there is a they were co- they were considered a um oh, what was the word I used? It was a um self-improvement program. There was a business that did an, a self-improvement program called NXIVM or Nexium. Um Oh, that was their that's mm-hmm. weird. That's a weird, yeah. like... <laughs> yeah, they're called Nexium, uh, and it's led by a gentleman named... I'm probably saying his name wrong, and I really don't give a shit, uh, but his name is Keith Rainier, and... Yeah, uh that looks like Rainier, or Rainier, yeah. Ran- Ra- Rainier. Rainier? <laughs> Rainier? Whatever. Who Anyways, the fuck Rainier, cares? Whatever. Fuck it. He was always, from what I could read, he was always uh, described as a really charming guy. Most of them are. Is always scary to start with, <laughs> yes. Um, and he had this, uh, he basically had like a sex slave cult 
Gross. guised under a quote unquote self improvement program. So it was re- led by Keith. Um, and the fun thing is, uh, so Alice and Mac ended up getting arrested for a lot of what happened with this and we'll know her very well from uh smallville that yeah and that was what i was gonna say earlier is that like she was like my hair idol when i was a teenager and i got I really sad i'm like heartbroken because i have smallville dvds in the other room like i'm heartbroken but it gets worse so it wasn't just alice and mac that was involved with this actually Kristen crick got no. alice and mac involved really I yes. didn't know that at all. So, according to the articles I read, Kristen Crick recruited Alice and Mac, and then she, Kristen Crick, ended up leaving. Okay, well, good. <laughs> good, but still... Yeah. Yikes. All yikes. Um, I also read somewhere that Alice and Mac, on Twitter, tried uh, recruiting Emma Watson. I, that was what, uh, that was, like, really the only thing I saw. I saw, like sex trafficking Allison Mack and Emma Watson and I was like nope I don't want to nope. read this <laughs> nope 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 yeah so Emma Watson apparently I went and read through she sent uh Emma Watson posted something on Twitter and Allison Mack was like hey I have this really cool like self-improvement thing you could do and people were like well that was her trying to recruit her but from what I could tell Emma Watson did respond to her because Emma Watson's trying to be in college yeah. Emma Watson is just trying to do her own fucking life. And Emma Watson is smarter than that. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. I thought Allison Mack was smarter than this, but apparently not. She it could be really... a... Um, what's it called? I literally said this to my pets today. Stockholm. <laughs> yeah, that, that too. And she did kind of disappear off the map after Smallville. She totally did. And so did... Kind of so did Chris and Crick. So it really makes sense mm-hmm. that this shit was happening. But I digress. Um, <laughs> so this self improvement program, sex cult thing, started in two thousand three, and um, that long t- ago. Yeah. Wow. And in twenty fourteen is when things started to really like people started to act a little apprehensive towards it because um what was it oh Keith's original wife left him, okay. and she like had released something about it being like really like gross. Um, but anyways, so, um, it was accused of being a cult for many years. Uh, in a 2010 article in the Albany Times Union, former Nexium coaches characterized students as prey oh, no. for use by Rainier by, in satisfying his sexual or gambling related proclivities. Gross. Gross. <laughs> so, so between 2010 and 2017, not a lot really happened. Yeah. Well, they, it seemed like they, they were in the Albany Times. They were probably keeping it down low they were keeping it real down low and it was one of those things where i'll get into it i'll get into (laughs) it okay let's just say these people could not escape there was no way um well yeah starting usually usually in these situations it's like they take over your whole life they suck you in make you completely separate from your actual life and then once you're like i don't want this anymore they're like well you're kind of fucked so where where are you gonna go (laughs) So they actually took it pretty, pretty far. So my next little bullet point says, uh, starting with an October 2017 article in the New York Times, details began to emerge about DOS, a secret, a secret sisterhood. They called it like a sorority. What is DOS? Uh, I don't know. (laughs) Okay. I I couldn't find anything. So maybe it's just me. Maybe I just do really bad fact checking. Um, It might be the sorority. It might be a name of the sorority. I mean, I'm looking it up. So keep talking. Um, within Nexium, in which female members were referred to as slaves, branded with the initials of Rainier and Mac. So it was K M and A M. Um, subject <laughs> to corporal punishment from their masters. Ew. Ugh. Yeah. And are you ready for why they couldn't escape? No, I don't know. Am I? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, they had to provide nude photos or other potentially damaging information about themselves as collateral. See? Yeah. They have to, See? like, completely fuck themselves in the normal world. Yeah. And there, it did end up coming out that they were doing it financially, too. Oh, God. There was, like, financial shit in there, too. Uh, it was later, it was very recently released that Alice and Mac was the one who actually had the idea of branding these women. Jesus. That's... Yeah. 
so fucked up. She was she was his like right hand lady. Like she did everything for him, and all the shit that these women had to do was because of Alice and Mac. She was and like Alice his... and Mac got paid for it. Oh God. Yeah, it was That's pretty gross. So terrible. Yeah, it's fucking. It's so crazy. So in March 2018, Renee was uh, arrested and indicted on a variety of charges related to DOS. What is DOS? Did you find that out? I am currently, they literally just keep saying DOS women, DOS slaves. See? It makes me, it makes me wonder if they even had like, if the name is so under wraps that they just call it DOS. DOS collateral. Yeah, it looks like they literally just say nothing about it. (laughs) Yeah, it's fine. It's whatever. He was re- arrested and indicted on a variety of charges related to DOS, including sex trafficking, sex trafficking conspiracy, oh, conspiracy to, and the conspiracy to commit forced labor. That's, ugh, it's all so gross. <laughs> I know. He was arrested in Mexico and held in custody in New York after appearing in federal court in Fort Worth, Fort Worth Texas. The indictment alleged that followers were coerced into sex with Rainier who forced them to undergo branding rituals uh, alleged by Edmondson, who I think was his ex-wife? I don't remember. And others. So other people had also said, like, he's branding these women. Which, once you're fucking branded... Literally never going What away. the fuck are you gonna do? I mean, you can slice that piece of skin off, depending on Have how big. fun, Jesus. <laughs> Go to a doctor. Uh, brand- branding ritual. Aha. United States Attorney Richard Donahue stated that Rainier, and I put this in bold, he created a secret society of women who he had sex with and branded with his initials, coercing them with the threat of releasing their highly personal information and taking their assets. Fucking dick. Right? Uh, FBI's New York field office assistant director in charge stated that Rainier displayed a disgusting abuse of power in his efforts to denigrate denigrate whatever and manipulate women he considered his sex slaves that's oh my god why we still need to do like a a cult leader whether or not there's so sociopaths or psychopaths (laughs) because i'm not sure anymore i think this guy's a fucking narcissist probably all of the above probably i don't think he's a psychopath no, but he's definitely definitely either a sociopath or just like a like a super crazed narcissist. Probably. Yeah. Um on April twentieth, twenty eighteen, Mac was arrested and indicted on similar charges to Rainier's, according to prosecutors, after she recruited women into first Nexium and then DOS, Mac coerced them into engaging in sexual activity with Rainier and performing menial tasks for which she was allegedly paid by Rainier. Uh, Mac was alleged to be second in command of Nexium Nexium after Rainier, and on April 24th, Mac was released on $5 million bond pending trial and held under house arrest with her parents in California. (laughs) Poor parents. (laughs) I know! Can you imagine getting your daughter back like that? No. I'd be like, like, thanks, but no thanks. What the fuck are you doing? I know. (laughs) Jesus. Um, if they're convicted of all charges, they face a minimum of 15 years and up to life in prison. And uh, if you go on their web on the Nexian website, they have a website for it. It's still um, up. Oh yeah. Oh god. <laughs> it, here, I'll give you the actual their website. Their actual website says something, and it's kind of like gross. Uh, it says it is with deep sadness that we inform you we are suspending all Nexium slash ESP enrollment curriculum and events until further notice. Curriculum. We'll be in touch. Yeah. <laughs> Because like it was a, a self it, it was self improvement. Oh my god! Uh, it says we will be in touch with more information for anyone currently enrolled in upcoming events and programs. While we are disappointed by the interruption of our operations, we believe it is warranted by the extraordinary circumstances facing the company at this time. We continue to believe the va- in the value and importance of our work and look forward to resuming our efforts with these when these allegations are resolved. Jesus. Yeah. So basically, it's not. Nexium, that's the the cult. It's that DOS. Yeah, that's literally. And once literally, you I just go from Nexium to firing. DOS, yeah, that's when it gets bad. Yeah, it says that in this article I'm reading right now. It says that, um, 
Nexium is an Albany-based organization run by Keith Rainier and Liz Nancy Salzman, which hosts the executive success programs that members are saying now we're a front for a closer knit organization that involved branding, branding, male restrictions, sex, and blackmail. But then it goes on to say that um, Mac was accused of recruiting women for the DOS in which women were branded against their will and forced to fast, take, yeah. uh, take cold so, showers, perform oh a God. daily act of honor. Ugh. No, it gets fucking gross. If they don't meet their weight requirements, they get in fucking trouble. It's all Allison so gross. Mack was like 80 something fucking pounds. She, oh, she looks like an actual demon right now. <laughs> yeah. She's tiny. They're all fucking tiny. And, um, God, what else was there? Their fasting is terrible, obviously. Yeah. It was just, when I was reading into this way earlier, when it was all fucking coming out, it was bad. It was real bad. The articles that I pulled out were not doing this thing justice. Alice and Mac really fucked up these girls. The other thing, oh, the other thing that people were saying was, um, Kristen Couric denied recruiting, recruiting anybody. Well, yeah, of course. Her lawyers are probably like, don't fucking say anything. Yeah. So, Nexium Sex Cult, what we know about the Nexium Sex Cult. Fact or fiction, there it is. Um, God, she's so fucking small. She looks like a child. Yeah, she's teeny weeny. Um, Rolling Stone actually posted, like, the nine things you need to know about this cult. And they were saying that um, Rainier was a... Yeah. What's the word I'm looking for? Multiple partners. Starts with a P polyamorous thank you it was polyamorous <laughs> and it wasn't a sex cult jesus well yeah I know. That's... okay but is it a sex cult uh mac was charged with trafficking and forced labor in a statement on april 20th miss mac was one of the top members of a highly organized scheme which she which was designed to provide sex to rainier under the guise of female empowerment she starved women until they fit her code go defend its sexual feminine ideal so she was the fucked up one about the weight I think they're both fucked up. Oh, but God. yes. So when it comes down to it, what I said was right. Like yeah. Alice and Mac fucked up these girls. Yeah. She was and like, she was not a victim in any way, shape or form. No, I never thought she was a victim. <laughs> fuck no. That's fucking gross. Um, but then <laughs> the what about Emma Watson? She, uh, she used Twitter to try and recruit high profile people yeah uh in the case of emma watson's at mention matt wrote that she wanted to talk to her about a unique human development and women's movement and the the tweet said as a fellow actress i can relate so well to your vision and what you want to see in the world i think we could work together let me know if you're willing to chat that's so fucked up because emma watson is actually doing good things in this world right and to use that and abuse it and twist it, her words against her it's just like who this is why the world has trust issues i know god why won't they just fucking say what dos is i hate this it was probably like some of the crazy underground they won't even release it in legal or unless it's in cult or something in cult in, court. in cult <laughs> i think it's so i th I think this like multi-tier organization cult thing they have going on is really interesting because they have that female empowerment guys which is the top mm -hmm. and then the J Ness which was the all women's group mm -hmm. is right below. It, and that's where Alice and Mac was taking these girls she was and recruiter. putting them down into the DOS. Yeah. yeah. Ugh. 25 secret sex slaves. Jesus. So sad. So fucking sad. But was it, okay. So was it for his own gain or was it, were they literally shipping these girls out? It was for him. Ew. It was sex <laughs> trafficking for him. They weren't shipping the girls anywhere or the, if they were like, conspiring against it that's a whole nother story because he is charged for conspiracy oh i guess yeah the trafficking part would be mac grabbing the women from throughout the world and then shipping them back to him maybe so, yeah ugh, ugh, yeah it's so nasty so yeah gross <laughs> by the way gross all gross um but yeah, so it, they say they have to shut down everything because of <laughs> these extreme circumstances or whatever it was. Oh, God. Yeah. It was like, come Fucking... on. Come on. Ugh. I remember Ugh. when we like first started recording and I was like, did you hear about this? <laughs> oh, you Fucking did. Crazy. Yeah, I did. Oh. 
That was so Fucking long crazy. ago. <laughs> Ugh, wild. But anyways, that's that's mostly mine. Um, there's a lot of shit that's still being like well, yeah. released as it goes. It's still it's in so and new. Stuff. Yeah. I mean the the business isn't new, but the all this like news stories and arrests, it's all so new. I always it's like scary. Sp- especially since you said that there's a there's a website. I like going back and looking at all their like recruitment videos and being like, haha, you got caught. <laughs> Hi, this sucks to suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same. It's funny, when this happened, I was when um when it first got released that Allison Mack was involved in this I went looking everywhere. Really? I went on Instagram. I went on Twitter. I went on freaking YouTube. I went everywhere trying to figure out what the fuck was going on. Hmm. Just trying to figure out what Nexium was. Yeah. Before they released all the rest of the information. It was like, Allison Mack is, you know, arrested on, or Allison Mack is suspected of, like, cult practices. And I was like, bitch, what? <laughs> I'm here for this story. Where do I go? Yeah. (laughs) But nobody, obviously, because these girls are fucking, like, sequestered into secrecy with Mm -hmm. their fucking private information, their financial assets. Yeah, they're probably freaking out. of course it's not going to be anything. Exactly. Oh, my God. I really, I really hope these girls don't get fucked over. I mean, they might at some point, but not in the way that you probably think. They'll probably do something like, they'll reveal it to make a bigger case against the cult practices there was something actually speaking of reveal um so buzzfeed actually did a um an article about nexium and who had ties in with it oh shit and one of the top aides of donald trump oh no joe hagan hagan whatever he was listed oh god and oh my he, god he ended up quitting his job. Oh my god! <laughs> or did he get fired? So no, bad. he re- he resigned. Of course, of course. I mean, this that's was the three same days thing. ago. Oh, this was recently. Oh god. Yeah. So one of the like all of these ones that say like he he resigned. He resigned four days ago, five days ago, three days ago. Jesus. One of the articles says top Trump aide Joe Hagan worked in Libya with key backers of Nexium. Fuck. In That's Libya. So bad. In Libya. <laughs> the <laughs> fuck is Libya? They were, uh, Nexium has been accused of brainwashing too. Well, yes, they're, they're all brainwashing. They're fucking self-empowerment cult. <laughs> God, fucking crazy. Oh my God. It's all so bad. Everything's it's bad. bad. Yes. <laughs> Everything is burning. Everything is on fire. <laughs> I don't know if I should trust in, like self improvement. No. Anything anymore. I'm not taking any classes. I'll read books, but I'm not taking <laughs> classes. Yeah. Don't expect all... me to contact anybody. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Good luck with anybody trying to do self improvement classes now. Like seriously. Right. It's Can't. not gonna work unless no. it's like unless it's like birthing one hundred and one. Make your baby's life better. I mean, <laughs> or something. I don't know. Like that I don't that know. even sounds culty. <laughs> see? I know. Exactly. So, we'll see. Oh. <sighs> we'll see. Oh, my God. It's fine. It's your turn. Oh, God. Are you ready? It's your hard time, Tori. Sorry. <laughs> it's what? What did you say? Your hard time, Tori. Sorry. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. English is... I don't know. Anyways. I don't know. Ugh, I'm like, I'm like preparing my body for this because this is a lot. I have to like relive it. I Did I tell you how long I spent on my notes? Yes. Like, like forever. Like six hours. Yeah. Fuck no. Fuck and this no. was like, okay. So mine is, I picked mine because of, I want to say my personal relationship. So I'm going to preface this with, um, I think I've said this before. Um, on the podcast or just in life because I like to <laughs> I like to boast about it but my in-laws were almost part of this and okay I actually haven't said the cult the cult is the Manson family and we all know we, we all know bits and pieces about this but my in-laws were either at a party where they were choosing their victims or they were they knew the victims. I'm not actually sure. I really want to interview them and be like, yo, what's like, up? Like, how did you know this? Yeah. <laughs> Cause they, how are you connected with all of it? Exactly. And cause there wasn't, there wasn't honestly that many 
murders. There was only like seven. They didn't get away for that long. Exactly. The murders yeah. started in August and they were all arrested by the end of the year. Yeah. So, I mean, spoiler alert for my notes, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I want to know how how they knew the victims or how they were going to be victims or whatever. But it's cool. So that's why I picked them because also we all really want to know about the Manson cult. And I don't think anyone really is sick of hearing about the Manson cult. Um, I mean, after he died, it boomed again. Yeah. So no, no one's really sick of it right now. No, I don't think anyone will. It's such a fascinating, it's so fascinating. And you know what? Don't hate me for loving this stuff because I love it. It is like a brain teaser in real life. <laughs> An IRL brain teaser. <laughs> Literally why? Okay, I can understand listeners hating to, hating you because of this. But you're literally talking to the person who almost went into criminal psychology just to talk to Charles Manson. Yeah. No. I, I No, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you <laughs> hating me. I know you won't hate me. You'll love all this shit. It's fine. But no. Yeah. And if you're listening to this podcast, you better fucking love this shit. So, it's deal. It's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, disclaimer. This is about the Manson family, not Charles Manson. Just in case you are here for that. Or if I wasn't clear. Was I clear? I will talk all about my friend Charles. Yes. <laughs> I really I really hope they fucking do that movie. They were, Rob Zombie was supposed to do that movie. No. Yes, Rob Zombie was supposed to do a Charles Manson one. I don't know. Love Anyways. Him. So I'm going to like start at the beginnings because this is there's so much information that I literally had to put this into like their beginnings, their crimes, and then where are they now because there's just so much. <laughs> so this all started in 1967 um manson was released from prison for like petty crimes or whatever and then he moved to san francisco and he got to know this woman named mary bruner and he convinced <laughs> after moving in with her he convinced him or he convinced her to <laughs> he convinced her to move in with 20 more women he was just like all the love so Listen, she was <laughs> okay you have to preface this, though, with the fact that this is, one, the summer of love. Exactly. Two, summer of love. everybody, this was a big boom in um, the, the, the community living. I was literally getting to that next. Literally, you need to say it first. <laughs> <laughs> so, they moved in with 20 women, so two people became 20, and Manson established himself as the guru, so to speak, of San Francisco's height Ashbury district during... The 1967's Summer of Love <laughs> was emerging as a signature hippie locale. Um, this is where it gets kind of interesting because my original, we were originally going to do two different cults and my second one was Scientology. And I had no idea about this when I was doing the research, but the psychology of the Manson family actually is based in Scientology. And so I told that to Flynn and he was like, holy fuck. Because being uh, in Los Angeles, his whole family is like part of the Scientology movement. They're not in great. it anymore. But yeah. <laughs> no, it's just great. Isn't it? <laughs> um, the, ba -da -ba -ba. He soon had his first group of followers, which have been called the Manson family, most of them female. Um. Manson taught his followers that they were reincarnate they they were a reincarnation of the original Christians and that the Romans were the establishment. So the Romans were the man. He strongly implied that implied that he was Christ. He often told a story envisioning himself on the cross with the nails in his feet and hands. Sometime around the nineteen around nineteen sixty seven, he began using okay, this is fucked up. He began using the alias Charles Willis Manson. And he often said it slowly because it slowly it says Charles will is man son, implying that he <laughs> that his will is the same as that of the son of man. So he was fucking God, basically. Um, before the summer ended, Manson and eight or nine of his enthusiasts piled into an old school hippie bus um, they roamed as far as Washington State, then southward toward Los Angeles, Mexico, and southwest. Returning to the Los Angeles area, they lived in Topanga, Topanga Canyon, Malibu, and Venice. In 1967, <laughs> the same fucking year, Brunner had become pregnant by Manson, and on April 15, 1968, he gave, she gave birth to a son, which they named Valentine, nicknamed Pooh Bear. <laughs> He's beautiful. Um, in a condemned house in Topanga Canyon, um, assisted 
by the birth of several of the young women from the family. And this is a non-confirmed rumor. They couldn't find any actual evidence of this, but it said that Manson cut the umbilical cord with his teeth. Did they not literally just ask him? No. <laughs> it was just a bunch of like... They literally had him sitting in a box. <laughs> but that was the they last thing they wanted him. to know. They could have just asked him. <laughs> My goodness. Did you cut your umbilical cord of your son with your teeth? <laughs> right? Jesus. That's all I want to know before you die. Oh my god, I have a Ouija board now. We should answer. Or no. Should answer. <laughs> no. Don't even fucking... I will burn that fucker oh, to the ground. I will I burn like it. it. Okay, anyways. Um, when they were back down in Los Angeles area, Dennis Wilson of the Beach Boys picked up two of the girls from the family and invited him, them back to his place. Uh, he left for a while to go record. But then, could you imagine this? He came back to the entire family squatting in his home. He was m- greeted at the door by Manson, and he was like, are you going to hurt me? <laughs> he literally said that. He's like, are you going to hurt me? Please don't kill me. And so, obviously, Manson was like, no, at the time, because he wasn't fucking crazy yet, really. I mean, yet. yes, he was. He really, really was. <laughs> um, After, no, Wilson discovered 12 strangers, mostly women, um, over the next few months, their, as their numbers doubled, the family members who made themselves part of Wilson's Sunset Boulevard household, this is disgusting, cost him approximately $100,000 in the 60s. So who the fuck knows what that is now? This included, ew, a large medical bill for the treatment of their gonorrhea and $21,000 for the accidental destru- destruction of his uninsured car. I'm like, ew, they were literally just fucking each other left and right. And it's like, ugh, <laughs> dirty hippies. No. Um, oh, Wilson God. would, yeah, it's disgusting. Wilson would sing and talk with Manson while the women were treated as servants to them both. Duh. Um, Duh. <laughs> Manson established a base for the group at the Spans r- movie ranch, not far from Topinga Canyon, Boulevard in August 1968 after Wilson's manager evicted the family and the entire family relocated to the ranch. So the the manager was like, I'm done with this shit. You guys need to get the fuck out. <laughs> what are you looking at? I wanted to to check on his uh, his son. Cause I, like, Valentine? The, yeah, Valentine. Valentine fucking killed himself. Oh, he died? I didn't know that. I didn't want to get that far into this. <laughs> his His first son killed himself. A member of Nancy's cult. There's like literally nothing known about him. Oh, he probably changed his name. I think oh, most probably. of the ones that were involved, including family members, just changed their name. Cause you could you imagine like being no. a Manson? Well, fucking his first son killed himself. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, so now things are gonna get to the crazy shit. Which, if that wasn't crazy before, it's about to get chaotic. Mm. Um, I, I literally said I was like. Uh, so this is where things get interesting. That was the backstory. Spoiler alert, there are murders. <laughs> if you didn't already know. <laughs> BT dubs. I wanted to name all the members because the stuff that I'm going to be talking about was all done by the members and not by Manson himself. So Yeah, Manson didn't touch anybody. No, he was the director of sorts. So there was Charlie Manson, Charles Manson, and then Mary Brunner, Stephen Clem Grogan, Diane Lake, Leslie Van Houten. Is it? I don't know if it's Houten or Houten. Either way. Charles Tex Watson, who becomes like a big player. Patricia Krenwinkel, Bobby Boussole, um, Susan Atkins, Bruce Davis, Linda Kasabian, and Lynette Squeaky from. So the fucked up. So they had nicknames, hence the Clem Tex Squeaky. And the reason why she was called Squeaky is because when they moved to the Spawns movie ranch to pay Spawns, they, like, all the women had sex with him. And the reason why she was named Squeaky is because when he would pinch her legs, she would squeak. Are you okay? Did you just die a little? That's gross. That's gross. <laughs> okay, so now that we know the family members and their beginnings, this is the insane part and this is the great part. Helter Skelter. I'm sorry, Beatles. You didn't deserve Ugh, this. I know, right? It's so fucking sad. So Helter Skelter is pretty much what started everything that went down in the media, murders, crimes, etc. 
um, an overview of what Helter Skelter was. In the months leading up to the Tate LaBianca murders, which I'll get to, um, Charlie Manson often spoke to the members of his family about Helter Skelter, an apocalyptic war that would end in the slaughter of nearly all white people. He's a little bit racist, if you didn't know. Let's remember, people. He <laughs> definitely had a swastika tattooed on his face. Just just a little one, right? I mean... It was in, the, in between his eyebrows! <laughs> <laughs> My goodness! It could have been covered up by a unibrow. <laughs> Anywho. Okay. Um, this chimerical vision involved reference to the music of the Beatles, particularly songs from their album, The White Album, and to the New Testament book of Revelations. Manson and his followers would crawl down a secret hole in Death Valley and wait out the bloody war in a secret underground city. Upon the war's end, the group would rise from the desert and rule victorious blacks whom Manson thought would be incapable of governing themselves. This is fine. This is all really fine. Manson became obsessed with the Beatles' White Album, which included a song called Helter Skelter. Manson believed the Beatles had sent subtle coded message- messages about the race war through the songs on the album that predicted both the war and the Manson's family eventual rule over the survivors. Manson took the name of his doomsday scenario from the song Helter Skelter, but interpreted the lyrics from songs across the album. Which, okay, he compared the lyrics to verses he found in the Book of Revelations, which he interpreted, blah, 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 uh, as the Beatles as the harbingers of the apocalypse. (laughs) This was also where he confirmed his theory of a bottomless pit where the family would wait out the war. On Wikipedia, there's a whole breakdown of what Manson, like, the lyric versus what he thought so, like, you can just look it up. Just fucking look up Manson Helter Skelter, and it's all on Wikipedia. There was so much. Like, literally every line was broken down into some batshit thing that he saw. Literally, crazy will find crazy. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, so there, after, after Helter Skelter became an idea in the group, um the crimes started and i'm gonna go into like some of the crimes that happened on or around the tate murders time because they're not very interesting even though like murder and stuff poor people but we really want to hear about the tate murders so gary allen Heinemann, he there's a whole biography on him and who he was um the manson family killed him to get his non-existent fortune so they thought that he was super fucking rich and when they realized that he wouldn't join their family they killed him and they tried to blame the murder on the black panthers which was an la gang at the time and then they shot a man named bernard lots of papa crow and um he tried to show oh because so like he was telling he was trying to start helter skelter by himself like instead of it just happening happening naturally he went out and he found this guy and he's like here here's how we start helter skelter so let's start a race war (laughs) exactly so he like went and killed or shot this guy he didn't kill him but he completely expected retaliation so they like went back to the desert for a little while before coming back and doing everything else. So this next one, which was the um, La Bianca murders, they happened directly after the Tate murders, but, um, but this one's a little bit more intense. Manson took Watson, Atkins, Krenwinkel, and Kasabian, as well as Leslie Van Houten and Stephen Clem Grogan, and surge of more people to murder, which is where I think that Flynn's parents were part of that. I think that they were at the party that Manson was at to like look for people to kill. Um, Manson selected the Los Angeles home of grocery store executive Lino LaBianca and his wife Rosemary. After Manson and Watson tied the couple up and robbed them, um, Manson left with Atkins, Kasabian, and Grogan. Watson, Van Houten, and Krenwinkel remained and acted on orders from Manson, stabbing the couple to death, again leaving words written in blood on the walls. I don't know why I kept on the again, because we haven't gotten there yet, but they liked doing that. They liked writing on walls with blood. 
It was great. Very hygienic. I don't think they cared. They had like a thousand counts of gonorrhea. <laughs> it's fine. I don't know about uh, families sleeping with each other, but you know. Thanks. I mean, it happens in the Yikes. South, more specifically. <laughs> oh, right there. Oh. You, you ever heard those jokes about like the redneck families sleeping with no, each other? No, trust me, I've heard of <laughs> Oh my god. We're there. Whoa. Of course Damn. we went there. We're talking about fucking Manson. Damn. Uh, here we, we go. We love everybody. Trust us. But then the family was also notorious for vandalism and petty crimes. So that's that. And here we get to the Tate murders. Oh man. This like, it really hurts my heart. So. You um, having a hard time? You having a hard time? <laughs> I am, because I'm, like, seeing it all in my fucking head. Um, so, Helter Skelter, a little bit actually backtracking. When they came up with Helter Skelter, they decided that they were going to write an album. The family was going to, like, create their own musical album to go along with the White Album. And they wrote it, and they wanted to sing it for this <laughs> producer named Terry Melcher. He was supposed to come to their house at the time and listen to the material. And before he arrived, the women of the family cleaned the or cleaned the house. They made meals. They basically were like super nice and cool. But Melcher stiffed him. He never fucking showed up. So obviously, in a time when everything was downward spiraling for Manson, he was pissed off. Directly after that, he went to the um, the Melcher's supposed home, and um, that is where he met, for the first time, he met Sharon Tate. Not really, he didn't meet her, but she was in the house. So when they got there, Melcher had moved because he was just like in a previous tenant, um, because the previous guy from the Beach Boys had hooked him up to listen whatever so then manson left still pissed off still still looking for revenge and because of that on the night of august 8th 1969 manson directed tex watson to take susan atkins linda kasabian and patricia krenwinkel to melcher's former home at in case anyone's wondering um 10050 celio drive in los angeles and kill everyone there manson told the three women to do as watson told them and this was tex so i think i think all my notes say just tex from now on but it might be watson i'm not sure um uh tex took the women to that house where melcher used to live in quotes and told them to quotes totally destroy everyone in it as gruesome as you can the occupants of the house that evening, all of whom were strangers to the Manson families, fa- famlers? What the Whoa. fuck is famlers? <laughs> all of whom were strangers to the Manson followers were uh, movie actress and fashion model Sharon Tate, who was fucking goddess. Uh, she was the wife of film director Roman Polanski, who had his own bucket of issues. Have you heard all that shit? He was like, I think he was accused of like pedophilia and stuff. And then he like, oh. he left, he, um, he ran away to Europe and he's like still making or I he's doing a movie in Europe. He, yeah, he is. He's still producing films over in Europe. He's evading everything because he's in a non, whatever the kind of country that doesn't send people back is. Oh, non deport, whatever. Something like that. Yeah. So he's still like, he's still kicking anyways um but she was eight and a half months pregnant so like about to pop her friend was there his name was jay sebring who was a noted hairstylist uh polanski's polanski's friend and aspiring screenwriter uh i don't know how to fucking say it because he was polish it's, uh it's uh it's uh volchek volchek however you say it but it's spelled w-o-j-c-i-e-c-h and then Frykowski. So he was very Polish. Sorry, I have to think about this in my head. I have a friend whose name is Pavel and he's Polish and it's P O W E L L. It's all very strange. I know yeah. all, the only thing I know is that the W's are V's. Yeah. I think I think it's Volchek. Either way. 
with like an O, dragged O. I don't know. Um, Frychowski or Frykowski, and Frykowski's lover Abigail Folger, who was the heiress to the Folger Coffee fortune, and the daughter of Peter Folger. So was being the operative word here. <laughs> oh God, that was so dark of me. <laughs> it's a lot when- of shit. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Um, it was just like. At the time, like, that was a huge hit oh, it's, to, to it's everybody. Still, it's yeah. still terrible. That's literally like when you hear about the the Manson family murders. It is the Tate LaBianca murders, like, in everywhere. Yep. Okay, so when they arrived on the property after midnight, they encountered a car driven by Stephen Parent, an 18-year-old who had been visiting the estate's caretaker at his home at his guest house. So, wrong place at the wrong time just so fucked up i know they were just like anybody gets in the way um watson shot parent four times in the chest and the abdomen killing him before he atkins and krenwinkel broke into the main house leaving kasabian to stay at the gate as a lookout um the four people in the home were made to gather in the living room and tate and sebring were linked by ropes tied around their necks sebring was shot and stabbed seven times that's weird wording. I don't know if he was shot seven times and stabbed seven times or just like a combo situation. Might have been a combo. <laughs> I don't um, know. <laughs> see, if you guys didn't know this about me, whenever I talk about like really dark and really upsetting things, I tend to chuckle a lot because, <laughs> oh God, see, I'm doing it again. It's all fucked up. Ha ha ha. Nervous laughter. Um, Frykowski and Folger managed to free themselves and flee the house. Um, but both were chased down and killed by Watson and Krenwinkel. Here's the breakdown of that. Frykowski was struck in the head with a gun multiple times, stabbed repeatedly, then shot twice. Watson murdered him with a final flurry. That's such a crazy visual word. A final flurry of stabbings. Frykowski was stabbed a total of 51 times. At that point, like, how can you even... Count that's just all those stab wounds <laughs> you probably couldn't they were just like just I'm, I'm sure there's each other i'm sure there's forensics that can like look at where it chipped bone and where it slashed a gut or yeah, two <laughs> but still jesus <sighs> it'd just be like a jelly human at that point like jelly human being awful <laughs> oh my god i'm so horrible for laughing but this is okay um <laughs> Folger Folger was chased to the front lawn by Krenwinkel, who caught her, stabbed her, and finally tackled her to the ground. Krenwinkel and Watson stabbed Folger a total of 28 times. That's just, like, overkill. Why? Like, you know. Finally, Atkins. So, when they first wrote all these articles and first arrested everybody, they didn't know if it was, um... They didn't know if it was Atkins or Krenwinkel. Um who had killed Sharon Tate. Uh, but Atkins later on in life and later on in all, all the trials, I think in 1979, she admitted it finally that she did kill Sharon Tate um, by stabbing her 16 times, killing herself and her unborn child. So fun times. Um, earlier before they left the house, Manson had told the women to leave a sign dot, 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 something witchy. <laughs> So as they left, Atkins used Tate's blood to write the word pig on the front door. And Which, that's it's not witchy. No, it's not witchy at all. I don't know. See, that, that's, I don't know if um, pentagrams were a thing in the 60s yet. I mean, you, you know witchy stuff, so. I don't know about in the 60s. Uh, pentagrams have been a big thing for a long time, though. Yeah. Um. So I would not, I wouldn't be surprised if um it if it was a thing and they just didn't know maybe because a lot of this occult stuff was really really buried just because people were they were burning fucking witches yeah pro- when when did the salem witch trials end uh 1692 to 1693 okay so that was a long fucking time before all this well, anyways. yeah but, but like even forever up until a lot recently due to this female empowerment boom witchcraft and stuff got put real real low yeah so nobody really talked about it you know no. i know so yeah. i wouldn't expect a bunch of hippies to know what pentagrams were exactly and that's that actually leads us back to an interesting conversation that we should have whenever we do like a witches episode on like why did we all love witchcraft when we hit puberty as women 
I mean, I know we still do, but like, why? Is it just because we're bleeding out of our vaginas that we're like, suddenly we're like worshiping Satan or something? Because it's like, you tell me. I think it spawns from Teenage Rebellion. Probably. Like doing spells to kill your family because you hate them so much. Yeah, from the fact that like a lot of, I I can only speak from like the white suburban. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was a suburban wolf. (laughs) White people. Um, a lot of the, um, a lot of the populace, unless you were raised in a family that didn't believe in any sort of, like, God or have a higher religion, um, a lot of the shit that happens when you're a teenager is you're trying really hard to rebel and be everything your parents aren't. So if your parents are religious, then you're trying not to be religious. Or, like, trying to summon Satan. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So uh, it's fine. Well, we should. I I really want to do a breakdown. I know that, I know that my friend Paige will love Paige. to talk about that because she's all witchy too. Anywho, so pig not so witchy, but still it Probably left a some mark. Sort of connotation. Yeah. I well, I mean, because they were just angry in general. They were literally like acting out. They were just throwing yeah. a tamper, temper tantrum about the guy who didn't come and record them. Just go to sleep. <laughs> Take, smoke some weed and then pass out. Go to bed. <laughs> Deal with your gonorrhea. It's fine. Right. It's fine. Um, so that was the big, that was the big one. That was the big four, I guess I should say. Those were the big ones. Those are still hitting people really hard. Um, I've actually watched one of Sharon Tate's movies. I, I don't know why. I don't remember which one I actually watched, but she's fucking amazing. She was supposed to be the new um, Marilyn Monroe. And Which I, I be- also don't think that's a good thing either. No, but like in in term of star quality, yeah, the, just she was like not in term of mental illness. Oh no, 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 no. She she was like blonde, bombshell, big eyes, weirdly brushed eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Anyways, so fine. okay, the family. Where are they now? In a nutshell, they are all in not jail, yet. dead, or they changed their names and disappeared. But I'm going to break it down a little bit more. Um, Brunner, Mary Brunner, who was the first girl that he seduced with his charm. um, She received a sentence of 20 to life, but was paroled in 1977, where she then disappeared. Um, Krenwinkel and Tex Watson were convicted of seven counts of first degree murder and are still in jail. Uh, Van Hooten was convinced of two counts... uh, Con- convinced was convicted <laughs> of two counts of first degree murder and one count of conspiracy to commit murder because later on they um i think after manson was arrested they still wanted to like carry on his legacy and yeah. so they 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 kept trying to find people to capture and kill but then by the end of the year they were all captured so um because yeah so the Tate murders happened on August August 9th yeah August 9th slash so so it started on August 8th and then went into the into August 9th but by the it's end of the year of two, of uh, 1969 they were all arrested so um Davis and Busole are serving a life sentence. Atkins died of terminal brain cancer. Serves you fucking right, bitch. Sucks. Uh, Squeaky Fromm was convicted in 1975 of pointing a gun at the then president, Gerald Ford. She is sentenced to life in prison and she was sentenced to life in prison and was released on parole after serving 34 years in 2009. So she's like out and about. Stephen Clem Grogan was released on parole after revealing the location of the body of Donald Shea, who was killed in 1969. That was another one of those, like, after Manson was caught. Yeah. They killed him. Uh, Diane Lake was not involved with the murders and was institutionalized after later called to testify against Manson and some of his quote-unquote girls at their trials linda kasabian after learning what the family had done in the tate and la bianca homes she was like fuck all this and reached out to prosecutors and was granted immunity in exchange for her testimony against the group she became the prosecution's star witness during the trial she's now 68 and reportedly changed her name and moved to the pacific northwest oh hi linda yeah so 
little bit okay. She didn't do any of the murders. She just was there guarding the door pretty much. Um, but yeah, that's that. And I, I told you in person, but I'm going to tell everybody else because I got, I got into this. It like literally fucked with my brain. I found out when they, when I found out they made an album, I immediately went to YouTube and I was like, the fucking family jams, let's hear it. And I heard it and it was fucked up and getting into their headspace was just I don't want to say too much because I immediately ran into I immediately ran into Flynn's office and was like, Flynn, you have to listen to this. It's oh my so God. fucked up. And he like, I was standing there watching him waiting for his reaction. And he like starts bobbing his head and like singing along. And I'm like, no, Stop. no, this We're is done. done right now. We're done. Um, but in one of the songs that's catchy as fuck, by the way, never listen to it because it will be stuck in your head because it's still stuck in mine. There were lyrics like, when you see the children, X's on their head, if you dare look at them, soon you will be dead. Oop. Yes. So. Oop. And then another song had them all sitting around. This was the most, this one was a really fucked up one. They had them, they recorded themselves doing spoken word for a few seconds at the beginning. Uh, like singing the lyrics, but it was, again, spoken word. And they were like just talking amongst themselves and laughing and giggling and i was like these are the voices and laughter of murderers and insane people i was like this is blowing my mind anywho also fun fact or not so fun fact this is for you by the way Hmm. the (laughs) the manson family cult killings all of the above were a conspiracy no there was a conspiracy that all of it was CIA funded. Like there is like literally. See, I can con- see that. Yeah, me too. Right. I can if see you it. look up, if you look up conspiracies of the family of the Manson family, there is so much evidence pointing to the fucking CIA being the backers of this. I didn't read too much into it because I was already down a really rough rabbit hole, but it is true and scary and see i can see i don't mean to interrupt you but i can see it as some sort of um almost quite nearly almost an mk ultra type thing yes Mm -hmm. yeah like like a mk ultra without drugs situation no it could even be with drugs because they were mk ultra was they were drugging people in the public okay but see that's the thing is that all the people who went to manson were complete strangers and they weren't like recruited at all really at least according to like everything i was reading are you sure (laughs) no it's called a conspiracy theory (laughs) for a reason but so according to everything i read is that everyone was not recruited in normal government conspiracy way they were just like hey i heard about this hippie dude who's like preaching all this like family love stuff let's go join him because we hate our fucking lives because i hate my parents and i want to run away yes in a nutshell yes (laughs) but yeah so i was like i have to fucking add that because i know you love your conspiracies i love it um like i said though my i had a runner-up we were good at g2 but i said that scientology was my runner-up and flynn and his family were slash are part of it still and by still i mean that they receive mailboxes full of spam letters that are still trying to convince they're like flyers like scientology is good scientology is life and it's like come back to us and it's all very very sketchy (laughs) and you have to like pay dues and it's like there's like flying dildos of made of gold and stuff and what? it's not actually a dildo. It's like a it's like a spaceship that like some alien god came down on and Listen. It's beautiful. The only god I believe in is Flying Spaghetti Monster and exactly. that's a real religion. Yes. Flying spaghetti monster is love. Flying spaghetti monster is life. Yep. It's true. So now that we've crawled out of that desert hole, Ugh. let's move on. <laughs> So you did, what was what it called? Nexium? Mm-hmm. Nexium. It's uh, when they do the, like, pronunciation of it, when they have it, like, spelled out, it has, like, the upside down E and stuff. So I think it's Nexium. Like, not quite um, but M. Isn't Nexium a sleeping pill? Or a car insurance? <laughs> Maybe. I, I tried know. looking up Nexium once, 
like, I totally spelled it wrong, and it had some weird, like, other agency thing, and it had this dude's face that wasn't Keith, and I was like, I don't know what's happening. Nexium side effects. What does it say? Heartburn medication. Oh. <laughs> so, for those with chronic heartburn, join a hey, cult. <laughs> make sure you spell it right first. Because, <laughs> cool. But yeah, uh, it was Nexium. Sex cult. And then the lovely, albeit a little bit batshit, only slightly, Manson family. Only slightly. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You know, only slightly. He was a short little dude. He was he not, was. like, he was real tiny. He had like a but big he's old... also he was also um, labeled as a sociopath. I think he's a Gemini. <laughs> so, on, I got this. Sorry, Gemini's. He's either Gemini or Virgo. Sorry, Virgos. I'm sure that there's a sociopath to go along with. I'm sure that there is a serial killer to go along with all the Zodiacs. Listen, actually, the majority of serial killers are either uh, Gemini. What else? Virgo. There was one more. I don't remember the last one. Don't say Leo, because I know way too many Leos. Uh, Charles Manson is Scorpio. That's a new one. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So culty goodness what are our themed movie recommendations our movie recommendations aha found it what the uh serial killer list oh my god you found one oh yeah i found one <laughs> of course you did there's not a single leo on this list yay yay for me and uh, flynn and my brother-in-law and, and my sister-in-law yay people uh and my aunt no taurus yay we're just a little bit crazy. It's mostly, it's a lot of Virgo, mm-hmm. a lot of Pisces, mm-hmm. a lot of Gemini, and some Sagittarius. I I honestly don't know if I know any Sagittariuses or, is it Sagittariuses or Sagittarii? Sagittarii, maybe. I don't know. What's December? Is December Sagittarius? I think so. I'm not December. sure. I don't know that stuff. That's all your department. I think I would know that. <laughs> December is Sagittarius. Wait, hold on. Zodiac sign for Capricorn. Sagittarius. Oh, stop it. November twenty third and December twenty first. Uh, my sister is Sagittarius. So she's a secret murderer. Is that what we're breaking Don't down tell here? Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. <laughs> but anyways, quiet is unsuspecting. Aren't Taurus or Leo, so whatever. Fuck it. Uh, I will it's never fine. look we're at your sister the same way again. Uh, okay. So, movie theme, movies, whoa, recommendations that are themed. Themed movie recommendations. Themed there movies. we go. Cult <laughs> themed movies. So mine's not really, I don't know, it's not like, it is themed, but you don't really find out until later that it's themed like that. And, well, you don't find out until like halfway through towards like the end that this movie is themed as a cult movie. Uh, but my themed movie recommendation was Hereditary. Yes. Yes. Which we've talked about, but it's fucking brilliant. And it's like the most recent cult type movie, so. <laughs> they did it really, really well. Go see it. It's still fucking in theaters. Go see it right yes, now. Just stop, please. drop, roll, go see don't, a movie. Don't stop. Not please let this finish. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then mine is actually themed to my cult, and that is Wolves at the Door, um, based on the Tate murders, but over dramatized. Yeah over dramatized so i For saw something so dramatic it's over dramatized yeah and i saw it once and i thought it was brilliant and then i saw it again after doing these notes and i'm like you guys are fucking losers you guys did it all wrong this is not how they died moving Listen, on i'll take i'll take a sledgehammer though honestly yeah, right Still quick will. and painless well yep as long know. as you hit right right <laughs> um but seriously watch it because it's good as long as you don't know much about the tape murders which <laughs> Now, apparently, don't watch it after this. So, so <laughs> go to the end of this episode, listen to this, and then go back and listen to the rest Just of the notes. Skip back. <laughs> it's fine. Just ignore it all. It's okay. fine. So, I realized after we posted the last episode, the last Watch Along Wednesday, which is coming up this Wednesday, we forgot to announce it. Like, oops. Yeah. <laughs> So Oops. we have a watch along Wednesday coming up. We are watching Cabin in the Woods, 
and it's really funny and we love it it's one of our favorites i know we've talked about it a lot but currently we're really only doing movies that we've seen a lot so that we can get into the rhythm of like talking talking (laughs) talk 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 i'm not good at talking during movies i know it's 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 harder you know you think that it would be easy but it's really hard because in our we've literally trained ourselves to not talk in movies i know people get mad at me when i talk during movies (laughs) well now you are gonna be in good company it's Um, fine (laughs) so that was it that was really all of it we're gonna be we're not gonna be doing like back and forth themed or back and forth person owned themes yeah and then, um, what else did I say? Oh, I, I actually totally forgot to announce the thing that I was going to announce at the very beginning. But we have a website now. <laughs> and it was three or four sleepless days of me trying to get this shit out because it was ugh, it was so complicated. But it is rainbowsandhorrormovies.com. So exciting. It's so it's so much (laughs) it's so intimidating because now it's like we're professionals we have a website we need business cards now we no that's so old school (laughs) Uh, and this is coming from a graphic designer who like spent most of her career designing business cards that's real that's why you don't want business cards no 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 okay so are we like ready for the rest of our exits what? Yeah. Uh, contact us. <laughs> contact us via email at rainbowsandhorrormovies at gmail.com or go to the contact page on our new website. We have Black Cat Club episodes and other bonus content on our Patreon at patreon.com slash R-A-H-M podcast. You can find us on social media at R-A-H-M podcast. I am on both Twitter and Instagram at the k dub k spelt with two y's michaela on instagram is at interstellar camper and on twitter is at the girl the girl <laughs> that girl michaela uh which might be changing yes what you said you said you might be changing your usernames yeah that might be subject to change we'll see we'll let you know yeah i've had that handle since i was like 13 <laughs> we'll get there and then so we haven't been saying this because we thought it was pretty obvious but please give us some ratings and stars and reviews and stuff because um the more we have reviews and the more five star reviews or even just starred reviews in general we get found easier so it's an algorithm guys yeah fucking fucking algorithm. bump us no wonder we're not getting found <laughs> because we're so good we should be getting found already we're so great it's fine <laughs> it's great the big thing the big thing i hate about instagram is people can like your post that's fine but it's the comments that do it mm-hmm. exactly people need to comment. comment on your posts comment on our stuff so comment on our episodes comment on our instagram just help us get found if you love us because we love you and we want to keep Share making content what share us with your friends yes share 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 but that's it we have a website rainbowsandhorrormovies.com contact us everywhere culty goodness cults thank you guys for listening (laughs) Bye. bye